Hey. Hi, it's Zoe today. It's not Avery. Hi, Zoe. Hey, Lena. Hey. Hey, Peter. Peter. Long time. Hey, Corbin. Yeah, very long time. Corbin and Gloria are here. Oh, and the Nelsons. Hi, Shmu. Hi, Cameron. Hi, Ella. Hi, Natalie. Karen, you got a fresh new mohawk. <laughs> it's awesome. Corbin, I'm so happy to see you. Are you cooking for 10 today? I also cut yeah. my hair. Who? My Who, said that? Who said that? Koda. Koda. Oh, hi, Shalmay. Hi. Hi. Here go. Hi, Griffin. Hello. Hi. Hey, Zach. Hi, McKenna. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Lena. Hi. Hey, Geigers. Are you guys at Tuan and Monique? Hi, Kayo. Hi. Hey, Kayo, remind me. Hi, Monique. Hi, Lena. Hi. Good to see you. Monique, remind me of your kids' names again. Uh, this is Colette and Spencer. That's right. Colette and Spencer. I remember. I, Colette, I remember you had a French sounding name. <laughs> Nice to see you. You're in a different kitchen this time, Kao. Do you know every, where everything is? Uh, no, uh, I'm, here I'm, I'm not as familiar. So. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Try to get Spencer and Colette to, to kind of try to get them to help you as much as possible before you ask Monique, okay? Okay. okay. Hi, Shmoo. Hi, Tegan. Great to see you again two days in a row. Hi, Ro. Hi, So. Hi. Sonia, like your hair. Hi, Maddie. Happy Father's Day to your dad. Happy Father's Day to everybody's dad. Hi, Mayati. Did you guys have any pie yet today? No? Today's Mayati's dad's birthday today, too. So they have two reasons to celebrate today. I bet he's really happy to get a night off from cooking. Hey, Natalie. Hi. Uh, yes, I do. All right. So, uh, Monique, Corbin, so uh, Corbin, are you in your grandparents' kitchen? It looks really big. Cool. Is Asher with you? No? Okay. You got your ribs in the oven, Corbin? Yeah, good. All right. So, it's 5.03. Let's wait a couple more minutes, but I just want to make sure everybody has their, um, hey, Jamie. Hi. He's everybody Aiden. have, hi, Aiden. Where's Ellie? Oh, she's not in a group right now. <laughs> 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 oh, well, this is screen. <laughs> cool. um, so everybody has their, um, their ribs in the oven and I understand. Thanks. Good. I got a thumbs up from Mayati. That's great. And Tegan. Um, I know some of you might have uh, baby back ribs, which is perfectly fine. Um, we, I think some of you texted me about that. And hey, Tyler. Hi. Um, so some of you texted me about that. And our ribs are probably going to come out of the oven at the same time. So um, no worries. And we'll just keep checking it every so often. We're going to leave them in the oven for now because I don't think we need them. Uh, we don't need to do anything with them quite yet. But I thought today, let me give you a lay of the land. So um, let's get math. Let's get a, uh, I think Beck is joining us today. So let's get Beck in, Mimi. Um, so we're also going to make some portobello mushrooms because I know we have some vegetarians here. So I'm going to demonstrate some portobello mushroom preparation really quick. It's just the same thing that you already did with the pork. Hey, Lisa, do you have Beck with you? Hi. Hi, Beck. Um, we, had we had problems getting in for some reason. I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, sorry about that. No, it's okay. okay. Yeah. No, you're good. Um, Mimi, what's the question that Griffin and Heidi have? They're supposed to. Oh, they're supposed to. Um, no, no need to pre-chop anything yet. We're going to do it all together. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our slaw together because we're going to do a very special preparation with the slaw. Do you know how sometimes when you make coleslaw 
at the very end, after a while, it can get kind of wet at the bottom and, and kind of juicy. And I'm trying to avoid that. So I found a technique yeah. that, that kind of works. Yeah. So um, we're going to prep our, our slaw first with a special technique. And then we're going to check in on our ribs. We'll open our ovens together and check them out. And then we'll make our glaze on the stove. And the glaze just takes about maybe five minutes to make and then we'll set it aside. And then we can um, finish prepping our slaw. And then at the very end, we'll glaze our ribs and we'll broil them under the oven. And then I'll show you how to cut them up and we'll serve them, all right? I hope people are hungry. And if you don't already have some rice going or like a potato salad or mashed potato or something, um, maybe have some kind of like pasta or bread or something to serve with your, with your ribs. But um, I'm just cooking rice because it's fast. So, all right. So looks like everyone's here. So everyone go ahead and grab your cabbage. Um, I specified red and green cabbage, but if you only have one kind of cabbage, that's just fine. But I have red and green cabbage and um, maybe, am I on the, you're on the main. Okay, oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, portobello mushroom folks, do you have your ovens preheated yet? If not, go ahead and turn your ovens to about 425. If you're going to serve portobello mushrooms with your ribs, that's fine too. We can just put them in at 350. But um, so, Ma um, Beck, are you gonna be making mushrooms today? No? Oh, you're making the ribs? Really? Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Anyone else only doing portobello mushrooms today? I'm also doing Emmett's salmon. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. You're mixing and matching. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyone else doing portobello mushrooms? Okay, Corbin. Anyone else? Okay, Corbin, so your ribs are already in the oven, right? Okay. So what you and I are gonna do, in case you haven't already, is we're just gonna sprinkle some of that dry rub that you made over the portobello mushrooms, both um, underneath and, uh, and on top. So maybe can you put me onto the um, cutting board? Okay, so um, I'm just gonna sprinkle the, the dry rub into the portobello mushrooms. And I'm gonna put it on the underside. This is the gill side. Because if you look closely, these mushrooms have the little gills on the bottom. And then I'm going to turn them over and I'm going to do the same on the other side too. And then I'm just going to throw these into the oven with my um, ribs. So that was pretty fast. Yeah. And like I mentioned in my video for making your dry rub, feel free to double or triple your dry rub recipe so that you always have a jar around. And then you can just throw it onto meats and vegetables anytime you want something quick to season with. So I'm just going to throw my, um, my mushrooms in. Corbin, I'm going to have my mushrooms start off on the cap side up. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put mine in the oven and then we're going to get moving with our slaw. Uh, okay. All right. So um, I have these two heads of slaw that are literally just out of the fridge. I haven't done anything to them yet. I haven't washed them yet. I haven't done anything. I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to um, process this slaw. So what I'm going to do with this first head of cabbage, I'm going to take this green head first. And I'm probably going to use about maybe half of this. Um, this is kind of a small head, so maybe I'll use more. What I'm doing now is I'm just taking off the outer leaf outer leaves um, and I'm going to throw them into my compost bowl. So just take off the outer leaves. Cabbage is actually a pretty clean vegetable. Um, it doesn't get that dirty out in the field. They, they kind of already kind of take, have kind of trimmed off the, the outside leaves anyway. So cabbage kind of comes to us already pretty clean. And um, so all I'm doing is taking off the outer leaf of the green cabbage. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rinse it under water. I'm just gonna take it to the sink and just rinse it all, oh. all the way around the head, the whole head of cabbage. Lena, yeah. we're, we don't have any red cabbage. That's okay. So, so should we just do the same thing as the green cabbage? Yes, you can do your, use your whole head of cabbage if you're not using any red. If you're using red and green, I would use the whole head of, uh, uh, half a head of each. 
But if you're doing um, just one, just one kind, you can go ahead and use the whole head. This cabbage, cabbage comes in all different sizes. This one's actually considered pretty small or medium small. I might end up using most of it, but we'll see. So I'm gonna do that with the green. And then for those of you who have red cabbage, I'm gonna do the same thing. This cabbage is bigger than my green one. So I'm all, probably only gonna use maybe like a third of it, but just kind of eyeball it and decide like how many people you're serving tonight and think about whether you mind having leftovers. Again, I'm taking off the outer leaf and I'm just gonna throw it into my compost bowl. And now I'm just left with this pretty smooth, clean head of cabbage. I'm just gonna rinse this under water too. I'm just rinsing. Okay. And then you can go ahead and set this red cabbage aside for now. And I'm gonna cut up the green one first. Okay. So to make the green head of cabbage easier to chop, I'm gonna cut it in half first. I'm gonna cut it in half um, longitudinally. So meaning like down, um, down, you know where the core is? I'm gonna put the core down on my cutting board. The flat part of the core is down on my cutting board. So it kind of stands up like that. Yours may or may not do that, but I'm just gonna cut it in half this way. So it's just in half. And you can see if I open up my cabbage, you can see that there is this little core on the inside on the very bottom where your core is, there's kind of this like heart, heart of the cabbage. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the core out. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my sharp knife, I'm just gonna cut around it just like that and cut a triangle at the very bottom, the base of the cabbage. I'm just gonna cut a triangle, I just cut the core out. I just cut out this triangle. And then you don't need this anymore. I'm just gonna throw it into my compost bowl I'm gonna do the same thing with my other half. You, if you wanna use both halves, you can. Um, and I'm gonna get my big bowl ready too. The big bowl that we're gonna use to, to mix our, um, to, to where we can put our cabbage. So go ahead and for your second half too, you can cut the core off, okay? And for those of you who are gonna use, um, who are gonna use both halves of your cabbage, that's fine. If you're only gonna use half, uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just use the whole thing. But if you're gonna use half, set aside half of your cabbage and you can put it in the fridge and use it for something else tomorrow. Or you can make more slaw tomorrow if you want or put it into soup or something or saute it. But what I'm gonna do with this cabbage now is I'm gonna cut it as thinly as possible. So you take your sharp knife and I'm gonna cut it, let's see, let's cut it in half again. So we're basically cutting this cabbage into quarters. So I cut it in half again, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna cut it into little, as fine strips as possible. And again, I'm gonna just rock my knife down. Do I see a chat, Mimi? Is there anyone with a question? Okay, what are some of the questions we have? Okay, look at, so I've cut my cabbage really thin. And it's also just gonna keep falling apart too. Some people use a mandolin to cut the cabbage, but I figured today we would just use a knife. Okay, so as you cut your cabbage, go ahead and just put it into your big bowl. And then just keep cutting your cabbage as finely as possible. It's super fine, as thinly as possible. A lot of restaurants, they have um, machines that do this for them. But since we're just processing one, one head, we're just gonna do it by hand. Be very careful, remember to keep your other hand, your fingers away from the blade. And just cut it very, very finely. But you can see here, it's just very finely chopped. Any questions? It doesn't matter what direction you cut. If you cut in the, if you, you know, cut it in the opposite direction. Cabbage is very forgiving, and once, especially once you make it into a salad, it's gonna be just fine however you cut it. And I know it's gonna seem like a ton of cabbage, but what we're gonna do to it later is gonna cause it to shrink down. And there's a lot of water in cabbage, it's a high amount of water. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sprinkle a lot of salt and sugar on it. And I'll explain what that does, does for it in a little bit. I'm just cutting my cabbage again really thin. All right. Okay, 
So I'm going to take my second half and do the same, cut a quarter of it. I think I might actually just leave a quarter of it and just cut this quarter here. Okay. And they do want to um, unmute everybody. If anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and, and ask. Why do you pick me? So I have a question for you guys. Does anyone here not, is anyone here not a fan of mayonnaise? You want if you're not a fan of mayonnaise, you can say you can shout out or we anyone are not a fan. You like mayonnaise? Who uh, doesn't like mayonnaise? We don't. You don't? Okay. Show me me and Coda. I mean Taryn. Anyone else not like mayonnaise? <laughs> I personally don't. Or no, who's, who said that? Cameron? Okay. Was that Cameron? Now you do it. Now you do yeah? it. Yeah? Okay. Cool. Ah. Cameron and Coda and Taryn, we will make a version of a dressing that has no mayonnaise in it. Okay? It's up to you. You can follow along. I'm going to make a vinaigrette. Um, I used to work at a restaurant called Bake Sale Betty. Actually, I'm going to still work. I'm going to work there next weekend because she needs help. And they, Betty hates mayonnaise. And so she makes a version of her coleslaw with no mayonnaise. So we'll go ahead and make a similar version. We'll make a vinaigrette for our mayonnaise that's no mayo in it. All right. So all you'll need for that, uh, Cameron and Xiaomei and, and Koda, is olive oil and, um, oh, sorry, Taryn and Xiaomei and Cameron, is, um, uh, is olive oil, a little either an apple cider or rice wine vinegar and mustard and maybe like um, like some garlic. We'll make like a, a version of a vinaigrette that you can use instead. Oh, Chris is here. All right. So uh, for those of you who are done with your green cabbage, let's go ahead and process our red cabbage. So again, I showed you earlier, it's like a big head of cabbage. I'm going to balance it on its base, right, on the very bottom. It's kind of flat. Mine is anyway. I'm gonna cut off maybe a, not quite all the way in half, but maybe like a third of the way down the middle. Cause I don't think I need quite so much red cabbage. If you need help, um, you can ask a parent. I know this is like a, a big knife here that you'll be using. You'll, you need a kind of a big knife to cut a big head of cabbage. But I'm just gonna use about a third of this head of cabbage cause I'm using my whole head of green. And then I just cut off the very end um, where it's kind of brown. I just cut that off here. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't really explain that. But I cut the base off. I noticed here for this cabbage, there's not really a core. But isn't it beautiful? Look at that. Look at the pattern in there. It's so beautiful. All those leaves, kind of the way it grew, has this beautiful pattern. It looks like a piece of art. It's kind of marbly. So I'm gonna cut this cabbage, um, this slice of cabbage in half, just like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with my green cabbage. I'm gonna cut it as thin as possible. And again, keep your knife away from your fingers, keep your blade away from your fingers and just cut it as thin as possible. You see here, it's very, very thinly sliced. And again, it really helps if you have a sharp knife. And as I was saying in my other video, uh, it's kind of counterintuitive, but having a sharp knife is actually keeps you from cutting your fingers because your knife won't slip on whatever you're cutting. It just goes through what you're cutting through fast, um, more smoothly and more easily. All right. So I'm almost done slicing this first quarter of my cabbage. And you can combine it with your, um, with your green with your uh, bowl of green cabbage leaves. This all goes into the same bowl. I know it's going to fill up your whole bowl. It's going to seem like a lot, but we're going to watch it shrink in a little bit. I'll show you how. I'm cutting my second half of my cabbage. Any questions? Hey, Chris. Hi. Are you cooking along with us? Yeah? Piper or Olivia going to join? 
Oh, actually, I'm not muted. Um, Piper's on oh. her way down. Okay. But I'm 15 minutes late, so I don't know what I missed. I was just going to ask Grace and David to fill me in and let you can. <laughs> so um, I just, are you doing portobello mushrooms? No, we're doing the ribs. Okay, so they're already in the oven? Yep. Okay, so I just cut my cabbage. We're just cutting cabbage right now. Okay. So um, I didn't use my whole head of green. I just used, um, I, oh, sorry, I did use my whole head of green cabbage because it was pretty small. Actually, no, I saved half. Sorry, I saved a quarter <laughs> of it. And then I'm using maybe like a third of my red cabbage. Okay. And we're so just cutting it as thinly as possible. I didn't miss anything else? Nope. Piper's here. Hi, Pipes. Hello. Hi, Piper. Cabbage, but we already cut ours. Okay. So I have my big bowl of cabbage all cut up. Everyone near the near finishing cutting up your cabbage? Okay. I'm going to rinse my hands really quick because they're kind of cabbage-y. Sarah's the executive producer. Yeah. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to take more my, um, where am I? I'm going to, I have these leftover parts of my cabbage. I'm just going to set these aside because we don't need them anymore. I'm going to get them out of the way. I'll put them in the fridge later and then I'll make a salad with them or I can put them into soup. So now we have our big bowl of, of cabbage. So what are we going to do with all that? Can I see everybody's bowls of cabbage and see how much you have? Okay, so Taryn and Coda, yours is smaller. Corbin, okay. Okay, um, Ro Sonia, can you lift yours up a little bit? Let me see how big your bowl is. Okay, cool. Mayati, okay. Chris, hi, Bright Griffin. Okay, so we're gonna use different amounts of salt, okay? So some of you have, like, I have a pretty big bowl of cabbage here. It's pretty big. So I'm gonna use, um, if anyone else has about this much cabbage, see how much I have? Um, let's see, Zoe, yours is probably about medium. I'm gonna have, I think I have the biggest bowl of cabbage here. Corbin, oh yeah, yours is medium too, and so is yours, Tyler. And Natalie, let me see yours, Natalie. Can you tip yours towards the camera? Oh, yours is pretty big, okay. Yeah, Corbin, yours is kind of small to medium. McKenna, can I see the bottom of your bowl? Mm, yours is pretty big too, okay. So Mayati, yours is big. So for those of you who have kind of a bigger, bigger bowl of, of cabbage, go ahead and take, um, Take your half cup measure and get your sugar out. So put in, so get a half a cup of sugar. Chris, I know your mouth is open and you're shocked, but what this means is that we are going to use the sugar and we're gonna use salt in a little bit. Um, we're gonna use it mainly to kind of shrink down the, um, the cabbage and we're gonna be rinsing it off later. Okay. All right, Lena, so I was, my mouth is open because I can't believe how many people are on. It's so oh. cool. <laughs> now I'm going to mute it. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, okay. Everybody. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. <laughs> so we have, um, I'm going to use half a cup of sugar. For those of you who have like a medium sized bowl, um, go ahead and just use the, like a quarter cup instead. You don't have to fill your sugar all the way. So I'm using a half a cup of sugar. I'm gonna sprinkle it all over my cabbage. I know it seems like a lot, but we're gonna rinse it off in a little bit, okay? So now um, I've sprinkled on my sugar, and now I'm gonna reach for my salt, my kosher salt, and I'm gonna use a quarter cup of salt. So I'm grabbing my quarter cup measure. For those of you who have a medium or small size, go ahead and just use um, half of that. Use like an eighth of a cup. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a, a quarter cup of sugar, sprinkle it all over. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my hands, save your cups, cause you're gonna need them later. I'm gonna use my hands and I'm just gonna mix it all together. Okay, just try to really uh, incorporate the sugar and salt in, yes. How much salt do we have to add? Um, uh, Kayo, let me see how much, what's, how big is your bowl? I think yours was medium, yeah? Oh, yours is big. Yours is pretty. Um, I would use about a half a cup of sugar and a, and a quarter cup of salt. Right? That's salt. Here's a quarter cup of salt. Oh, yeah. 
I know it seems like a lot of salt, but we're going to rinse it off later. And it seems like a lot of sugar, I know too, but we're going to rinse it off. But what this sugar and salt is going to do, it's going to actually help draw out some of the water that's in this cabbage. And it'll prevent it later from getting super wet and soupy. You know how sometimes when you have coleslaw, it gets wet at the bottom? This is going to prevent that because we're just going to use the sugar and salt to try to draw out the moisture in the cabbage leaves. It's going to break through the, the cell barrier, of the, the moisture, the water barrier in the cabbage. It's going to break through the, the, plant, cell, the plant cells. It's going to draw out some of the water. And then later, after it sits for a little bit, we're going to rinse it all off. So mine's pretty well incorporated, the salt and the sugar. And then we're just going to set it aside. OK, let's just, we're just going to let it sit for a little while while we make our glaze. Like, go ahead and rinse your hands. Griffin, I see you. I know my, your hands are messy like mine, too. I'm going to set aside my cabbage. We don't need it right now. I'm going to rinse my hands. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot, too. <laughs> the other thing I forgot was I forgot our onions. So for those of you who are using red onion, let's go ahead and slice our onions because we're going to incorporate the, that into the cabbage too. Because that also has liquid we want to draw out. So I want to use a half of this red onion um, right here. I'm just going to use half. So I'm going to cut it in half. Either way you cut it, however you want to cut it is fine. Um, I'm going to cut it in half, maybe lengthwise through the root like that. I'm going to set half of it aside. Um, and depending on the size of your onion, I'll let you decide how much you want to use. If you love red onion like our family, we might even use more of this, but um, I'll cut up half for now and see how much it is. And then just peel your, cat, peel your onion, peel the outside skin off. And if your skin, if the outside first layer of skin is kind of rough looking like this one, I'm tossing this one too. And then I'm going to cut it very, very thinly, just like the cabbage. I have it set down on the flat side, down. And I'm going to cut it up and down again, um, like longitudinally. So I'm going to cut it very, very thinly like this with my sharp knife. The it might make some of you cry. The inside of the red onion is really pretty. It, oh, let's, let's take a, oh, it is really pretty. Who said that? Who noticed Hold that? Oh, Show me me. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? Look. Yeah, it's not quite as marbled, but it has this more symmetrical pattern to it, huh? Looks uh -huh. like a flower petal. I'm glad you noticed that, Xiaomei. Okay, so we're gonna slice our onion very thinly. Not everybody loves red onion. Our family loves red onion. <laughs> Sometimes I, I even have to slice extra to serve on the side. And it's great. It's like we're in quarantine, so we don't have to see anyone. So if we have onion breath, it's no big deal. So I'm just cutting my onion super thin, just like that. And then I'm going to add it to our um, cabbage mixture. Sorry, guys. I meant to add it with our salt earlier, too. I'm just going to add it to our uh, cabbage mixture. And I'm going to incorporate it in so that it gets mixed in with that sugar and salt. Can you tell already that the sugar and salt's already doing its work? You can tell that the cabbage leaves are already kind of, um, kind of feeling a little wilty. You can kind of feel that already. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, they're softer, huh? Isn't that cool? Okay, so incorporate your red onion in. Let it get, let it kind of marinate in that sugar and salt. Okay, and then now we're gonna start over and, and uh, set it aside. And then we're gonna work on our glaze next. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my hands. Anyone still cutting onions? Okay, I see people still mixing, that's great. Uh, whatever parts of the, whatever ingredients you don't need, go ahead and set it aside. So I, I'm done with my cabbage. I'm done with my red onion. I'm going to set it aside. And we're going to move on to our glaze next. 
So for the glaze ingredients, we're gonna be at the stove and I'm gonna get my hoisin sauce ready. My hoisin sauce looks like this. Is anyone here gluten-free and not using hoisin? Sonia and Rosa, are you guys, do you have an alternative to using hoisin? We're using like a soy sauce substitute. Okay, cool. All right. I made your uh, recipe. Uh, oh, peanut. oh, good. Oh, good, good. I hope it works out. Me too. Yeah, peanut butter is kind of magic. <laughs> it's, it adds that thickness that you need, and it add, it'll add a really nice nuttiness and a nice flavor too. It won't taste like hoisin, but um, it'll, you know, it'll add some flavor. I know. I cry when I cut my onions, <laughs> Heidi. I know, Griffin. Oh, I know. It hurts, doesn't it? It hurts. Sorry, I forgot to remind you all. Do you remember when we've cut onions in the past? It can really cause it your eyes to hurt. Your what? <laughs> it's suffering. Why does it hurt? It hurt at all. I don't think so. <laughs> all right. So we're going to move over to our, um, our stove with our hoisin and our soy sauce and some five spice and honey. So I'm gonna move over to the stove and we're going to use, let me stove. <laughs> we're gonna use a half a cup of hoisin. You don't have to turn on the heat just yet. So go ahead and, and put in a half a cup of hoisin sauce. You could use the half cup measure we used before. I think I'm just going to eyeball it and put in what I think is about a half cup. Yeah, that's about right. And then it pours out pretty, pretty nicely. So that's good. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of soy, a, a half a cup of soy sauce. And I'll go ahead and just eyeball that too, but you can use your measuring cup if you want. Wait, Lena, did you say half a cup of uh, poison, poison sauce? Poison? Yes. And then um, I'm gonna Lena? use, yeah, Mayani? How much soy sauce? Half a cup. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we also wanna add uh, three tablespoons of honey. And the honey I'm gonna use today is really special honey. You know which honey I'm gonna use, Sonia and Rosa? <sighs> I'm, using Rosa's, I'm using Rosa's gold. I'm going to show you all. Rosa and Sonia are neighbors, and they have beehives in their backyard. And we always get a steady supply of beautiful, beautiful Berkeley honey. So Wait, I'm we, using their precious honey. Yeah? How, what should we use as a substitute for the hoisin sauce? Oh, I, I included a recipe um, that included, let's see, it was peanut butter. Um, let me see, what did I say? Ah, it is peanut butter, two tablespoons of peanut butter, Sonia or Rosa, yeah. two tablespoons of peanut butter, a quarter cup of coconut aminos, which I know you have. Yeah. One, one tablespoon of brown sugar or coconut sugar, and then two teaspoons of rice wine vinegar. So Mei Mei, can you, um, I'm going to have Mei Mei chat this, put this into the chat. So Mei Mei, it's right there. Uh, you see it? Okay. All right. So I'm adding my three tablespoons of honey now to my hoisin and soy sauce mixture. Sorry, Lena, you said three tablespoons, honey? Three tablespoons of honey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have a half a cup of hoisin in here a half a cup of soy sauce, and three tablespoons of honey. This is actually a real, if you have honey that's kind of like crystallized and hard to pour, this is a really good use for it too. Okay, good. So now we can turn on our stove and then have, grab your little whisk or fork I'm gonna turn my stove up to like medium. And go ahead and just let that kind of heat up together. You don't have to do much to it yet. 
we're gonna whisk it a lot in a little bit just to incorporate all the ingredients. Okay. If your hands are sticky, feel free to give them a rinse. How much honey should we use? Three tablespoons. Okay. That's the hoisin. It's, it's so the gluten free version is just these ingredients a half cup of coconut amigos, uh, two tablespoons peanut. Know. It's just that. That's just for the hoisin flakes. Um, so Clara's going to put into the chat the ingredients for the hoisin sauce substitute that does not have gluten in it. All right. So. I'm going to now, as the sauce is starting to heat up on the stove, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my, the rest of my ginger and my garlic ready. So I'm gonna peel off five cloves of garlic. And if you have a microplane or a grater, we can just grate the garlic and the ginger in. But if you have, if you want, you can also mince it. So I'm gonna smash my garlic again, like we always do to peel it, to make it easier to peel. Some recipes for this glaze are for like a, this is kind of like a barbecue sauce. Some recipes say you can just smash your garlic and throw it in whole, but I really love the flavor of garlic and I like to have the flavor really, um, you know, infused into my sauce. So I'm gonna mince it, I'm gonna grate it in. I'm gonna use my microplane and I'm gonna grate it in. In case you haven't noticed, I use my microplane a lot. This is this tool right here. If it's something you don't have in your kitchen yet, I highly recommend getting it because it can really come in handy. Uh, which I'm noticing now as I'm cooking with you guys over the past few weeks that it's something I tend to pull out quite a bit. So usually I say, oh, you don't have to buy certain tools you don't need to have. You know, you don't want to have too many tools in the kitchen that you're only going to use occasionally, but I think I use the microplane quite a bit. And like I always do, I cut the little brown part off the garlic just because it's hard and I don't want to eat it. And then I'm peeling my garlic and then I'm going to carefully, wow, I have a lot of garlic here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to just use five cloves of garlic. I'm setting aside the other two. Um, what, Mimi? Oh, three tablespoons of honey. Okay. So while I'm here at my cutting board, I'm also going to grab my ginger and I'm going to break off a piece of it. My kids aren't huge fans of ginger, but I do think it adds nice flavor and it's also really good for you. So I'm breaking off like maybe an inch of garlic, or sorry, inch of ginger. I'm gonna peel it with my paring knife. If you don't, if your family really hates ginger, you can go ahead and skip this step. Or if you want, you can just take your ginger and smash it and that'll just give it a mild ginger flavor. Wait, do you, do you uh, mince the garlic? You can mince it or you can grate it if you have a, a microplane. Wait, okay. uh, how much is this thing? Is that like three? So Sh Shami Mae, you're gonna break off like one finger of that. Okay. Break off like a little finger. Like, look at, look at how much I'm using. I'm just using that little bit. Okay. Thank okay. you. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, do we need to wash the tablespoons? I mean, the, the, the thing, because it's, uh, there's a bunch of honey on it. Just leave it for now. Okay. Just set it aside. Okay. I'm going to get back to my stove, because my stove is starting, my sauce is starting to kind of come to a simmer. So I'm going to come back to my stove and take my whisk and mix my ingredients together. My heat is on medium right now. And I'm just mixing my, my honey into my soy sauce and hoisin. There you go, it's getting even. The honey is melted in. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my microplane and I'm gonna grate my garlic in. If your sauce is coming up to like a pretty high boil, you can turn your heat down even more. If you have big pieces of garlic that fall in, totally fine. 
It is totally fine. Just do your best. Do your best to kind of mix in, grate in some ginger and garlic. But if big pieces fall in, that's fine too. Yeah, you can do that or you can microplane it. Microplane garlic? Yeah. Yep. You can microplane the garlic. Yeah. Or you can mince it on the cutting board if you want. And keep an eye on your sauce. Your sauce, if it's starting to come pretty, it's starting to get pretty hot, you can turn your heat down to low. Oops. And if, again, if the big pieces of garlic fall in, totally fine. Um, and every so often mix your, mix your sauce together. Yeah? Um, are, my, my, this uh, finger of ginger, it's uh -huh. like there's a bunch of like, like brown holes in it. Yeah, cut that out. Cut, cut that, cut those parts out. Okay, me. so sh so you should you also uh microplane the ginger? Yeah, you can if you'd like, or you can also just smash it and throw it in too. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm gonna smash my my ginger, but if your family really likes the flavor of ginger. I'm just gonna smash mine, just like that, maybe. And so my garlic is now smashed and it's kind of gonna break in half and it's okay. I'm gonna throw it into my sauce and I'm gonna take the rest of my garlic and kind of mince it a little bit, just cut it up roughly. Okay, and I'm gonna throw it into my sauce and give it a stir. A nice transition I make. I'm gonna take my whisk and stir it. It's starting to get thick. Do you see that? Is yours starting to get thick yet, everybody? It's me. Yeah? All right. So let's just let that kind of cook a little bit longer for one more minute. I'm gonna rinse my hands and I'm gonna move the microplane the parts that I don't need into my other sink. Rinse my hands. Can you smell this, the glaze cooking? Yeah. Glaze is gonna start to get thick pretty soon. It'll make it easier to brush onto your ribs. All right, so I'm just gonna give it one last stir, incorporate in the ginger and the garlic. And then we're gonna check on our ribs next. Okay, so get ready to check on your ribs. I'm gonna turn my stove off though before I do that. I'm gonna turn the heat off my sauce. Okay, I just turned the heat off of mine. It looks pretty, it's gotten kind of thick. Look, looks nice. You can, if you dare, you can take a spoon and dip it in or like the end of a knife or something and like the end of a butter knife or something or the end of some kind of utensil and dip it in and, and taste it. Mm, mine's salty and sweet. And then as it sits off to the side cooling, the ginger and the garlic flavor is also going to keep infusing in. All right. How is it? How is it back? <laughs> you taste it? Is it good? Is it getting thicker? Has it gotten a little thicker? Doesn't have to be super thick, but. Uh, yeah, a little. Okay, good, yeah. So once your sauce, once your glaze has gotten slightly thicker, you can take it off the stove and just set it aside. Hey, Lena? Yeah. You said to check the ribs? Yeah, we're gonna check the ribs all together. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. So I'm gonna take my oven mitt and I'm gonna, I'm about to open my oven. What I'm looking for everybody is I'm looking for the ribs, the meat to be tender and to be kind of pulling away from the bone. It may or may not be ready yet. I have no idea. Everybody's ribs are gonna maybe cook at a slightly different rate because of the size of your ribs and the temperature of your oven. But right now we're just gonna check ours together. Some of us may just pull ours out at this point. 
Some of us may need to put theirs in a little longer, but we'll check it together, okay? So, um, Mime, I'm going to um, have you put it onto the stove. Really? Okay, so I'm gonna put it onto the stove. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. Let's see. And I'm gonna check on my mushrooms too. Corbin, check on your mushrooms. How are your mushrooms doing? Corbin, while you're checking, go ahead and take your tongs, Corbin, and flip your mushroom caps over. All right. And I'm putting my, my mushroom caps, Corbin, back into the oven. Where's Corbin? Where's Corbin? Where's Corbin? There you are, Corbin. And your garlic. I so think. check your uh, mushrooms and then turn them over. Yeah, for the Good. All right. I'm going to check my ribs. Can we stove? Should we ask? Let's see. There's a lot of steam, so be very careful when you take the foil off. There's going to be quite a bit of steam, and there's going to be some liquid still, some liquid and fat still on the bottom. Take a fork. Take a, grab a fork, and just test it. Kind of puncture a piece of meat, a thick part of the meat, and if it's very tender, you're, you're, you're good. <laughs> How is everyone looking? Monique, do you have a question? Okay. That's okay. Ah! It's just really loud. It's I okay. Like it's it's dipping all the way at the bottom. Let me, can you move everyone through? Right? Over. Hold on a sec. Okay, Mimi, can you mute everyone, please? Okay, what was that, Monique? Did you say to turn the ribs over? Um, you don't, you can, just to kind of look at the bottom, but you don't need to. Okay, got it, thanks. But just, just, you're checking to see if it's starting to come away from the bone, and I can see it is. Um, and then check for tenderness. Does your fork go right through into the meat? If it does, it's probably about done. Yeah, my, my fork is just no, it's, it's very easily just kind of going right into the pork. How's everyone looking? How's everyone's pork looking? Can I see, can I hear, can I get some updates? Lena, this is Chris and Piper. Hi. Hi. Well, our, our meat, um, our pork goes into our meat really easily. Okay. It's supposed to sort of fall apart? No, no, it should not. What if you Not want really. it to fall apart? Would you cook it longer? Ours yeah, needs more you can. Time. Okay, it sh you can let it cook longer. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put mine in a little bit longer, even though it probably doesn't need it. Um, I'm just gonna put mine in a little bit longer, but for those of you, if your pork, um, Mimi, can you put it on stove, please? If your pork is pretty tender already, you can just go ahead and pull it out. Hi, Grayson. Did Grayson wake up? Hi, Grayson. Grayson Piper, Grayson. Hi, Piper. Oh, she can't. He needs to go on stove. <laughs> you gotta... Piper's embarrassed. Okay. Grayson Hi. is very tender. Yeah, good. Yeah, so everybody test your pork. If it's pretty tender, you can go ahead and pull it out. Mine is tender, but I think I'm going to put it in a little bit longer because I like it super tender. So I'm going to put my foil over the meat again and be very careful that I don't spill any of the liquid as I'm putting it back into the oven. And I'm just going to let it sit in there for another maybe 10 minutes while we finish off our slaw. Okay. Part of my foil fell off. You might need a little hand from an adult if you're worried about transferring the foil, the, the oven rack back in, or the tray back into the oven. Okay. All right. Everyone good? Did you, who's taken their ribs out? Anyone give me a thumbs up if you've taken out your ribs? Tegan, what did you decide to do? Corbin, you took yours out? We left ours in. Okay. How about you, Corbin? You took yours out? Okay. Is it tender enough? Cool. Excellent. Ta Maddie, how about you? Did you keep yours in? Yeah, okay, all right. All right, um, so we're gonna work on our slaw next. Does anyone have any questions about their ribs? Cameron, where are we supposed to put the 
Oh, I forgot to have you put the spice spice in. Thank you, Cameron. It's not too late. Everybody, if you're making the glaze, I forgot one ingredient. Thanks, Cameron. <laughs> um, we're supposed to put in one teaspoon of five spice. Oh, you're so good. So go ahead and add one teaspoon of five spice into your glaze and mix it in. I know we're really multitasking here, guys. You guys have three things going at once. It's pretty good. And I'm going to take my whisk and and mix in my five spice. You can see it's already thickened some more too. Wait, um, how much? How much of the one? One one teaspoon. Just okay. one teaspoon. Yeah. You can see it's starting to thicken. It'll be really nice. And there's some big pieces of garlic and ginger in mine, and that's totally fine. Okay. All right. So let's set this aside again. And taste it again if you want. Okay. So let's work in our slaw. So grab your big bowl of slaw and grab your salad spinner. If you have your salad spinner nearby, Go ahead and grab your salad spinner or your colander. And if you have a colander, go ahead and put your, um, go ahead and start transferring your slaw mixture. Um, maybe can you put it on this cutting board? Our dad is our salad spinner. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna use too. Okay. I'm using a salad spinner. So I'm gonna, I have my salad spinner basket on my cutting board and I'm going to just put everything, my whole bowl of cut up vegetables into my salad spinner, but I'm doing it over the sink, everybody. Do it over the sink because there's gonna be a lot of water that comes out. You, you see, you see here there's like, I don't know if you can tell, but you can already see some water right here. So I'm gonna pour, put your colander in the sink Put your basket into the sink and pour your vegetables into your basket or into your colander. And the then what you're going to do is you're going to rinse it. Okay. Our, and rinse. Our, our dad is our salad spinner. So okay. What should we do? Um, he should put it into a colander or put it into a salad spinner. What? Justin, I know. I'm just telling them what to have Justin do. Hey, Baba Justin. So go ahead and throw your salad into your colander. And you can see here, I have all my coleslaw in my colander like this. And then you can put it into your, and I rinsed it. So I rinsed it in the colander or you can rinse it in the basket. Just rinse some water over it because you're going to be rinsing off that sugar and salt. Okay, and then I'm gonna, just gonna put this into the salad spinner and I'm gonna spin it dry. If you have a colander, you can take handfuls of it and just kind of um, squeeze it dry. So wring it dry with your hands. Doesn't have to be bone dry, doesn't have to be totally dry, but I'm just gonna put it, put my salad spinner and, uh huh. How, how should we rinse it? Just like wash it, like use yeah. our hands? Or... Yeah, just rinse water over it. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Mayada, you have your salad spinner going too. Awesome. Yep. So I'm just gonna spin it dry. Nice work, everybody. Most of you have salad spinners. If those of you who have a colander, you can just wring it dry, just squeeze it dry. And as you dry it, you can put the handfuls of dry vegetable into your, um, into your coleslaw mixing bowl. Because we're gonna be mixing a dressing in. So I'm just rinsed out my original coleslaw mixing bowl. And I'm gonna empty out the dried um, vegetables into into the um, into the coleslaw. And look, when I dried it out, you can see there's still a lot of like a lot of this beautiful purple liquid. 
that came out of the salad. If you feel like it's still kind of wet, you can spin it again if you'd like. I think mine, yeah, mine could use maybe another spin. I'll spin it again, but it's up to you. So I'm gonna do one last spin. This is another kitchen tool I use all the time. The microplane and the salad spinner are two, two items that I don't think I can live without. So handy to have because it dries your salad greens really quickly and it keeps it keeps its shape too. Doesn't kind of wring it dry too much. So, oh look, I can see, I look at when I did it a second time, I got more liquid out. Okay, so dump out some of the liquid that's at the bottom of your salad spinner if you have that. How is it looking, Griffin? You don't want to do another spin? Did you empty out the water inside the container? Did you empty the water out the bottom? Yeah, empty some of that water out. Hi, Gerhard. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Okay, so yeah, give it another spin if you want. My salads, my coleslaw is feeling pretty dry. Still, you know, it's still moist, it's still wet, but it's not nearly as moist as it was before. If you want to spin it a third time, you can totally do that. I think I'm going to let it go after two times, but you can do it a third if it's still too wet for you. And then I'm going to throw it into my mixing bowl, my coleslaw mixing bowl. Okay. Um, should we check our ribs? Um, did you check it already? Okay. Is this your, is this well, your first this time? Is, no, this is our second time checking it. Okay, we're gonna check it in like two minutes, Xiaomi Mei. Okay, we're gonna check it in like two minutes. So once everybody's done with their, um, with drying their slaw, we're gonna rinse it again. So I'm gonna put this salad spinner away because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to set my salad bowl aside. If you want to check your ribs now and take them out, if your ribs were like almost done, you can go ahead and take them out now. If you want to keep them in a little bit longer, that's fine too. So Shami Mae, do you want to take out your ribs? Were your ribs pretty tender already or were they still? Our they still rib, we put our ribs in like 10 minutes late, so. Oh, we'll okay. Wait. Okay, why don't you wait with me? Why don't you leave them in there a little longer? Okay. Okay, we're, they're at a low enough temperature where they won't burn. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, everybody, is we're going to make our slaw, our coleslaw dressing. So I'm going to make two versions of this dressing. I'm going to make one that's a vinaigrette for our non-mayo eaters and one that is a mayo base. So I'll make the mayo base first. So, so go ahead and grab your mayonnaise your Dijon mustard, and your apple cider vinegar, and maybe a little sugar, if you like sugar, if you like your coleslaw a little sweet. If you want, you can taste, go ahead and taste some of your coleslaw. Taste like a couple leaves of your coleslaw. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit and taste it. Can you, can you tell it's really crunchy? It's still salty and sweet, right? Yeah. That probably means we don't need to add any more salt, really, or sugar until the very end when you taste it right before you serve it. I think it, mine's pretty salty and sweet already. Okay? So your, your, your spa is already pretty well seasoned. So I think all we need to add now is our mayo and our mustard and our apple cider vinegar, unless you're not using mayo. So for those of you who are... Yeah, yeah Chris? I thought we had apple cider vinegar, but we don't. So what should I okay. use instead? You can use red wine vinegar. Do you have that? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna start with about three or four tablespoons of mayo, depending on how much you like mayo. Oh, Shmuel likes mayo, cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna spoon in into a, a bowl about this size in the mayo's cutting board. Okay, so I have a bowl about this size. I'm gonna spoon in about three or four tablespoons Hmm? Oh. Hey, yeah. Kale, what's your question? Uh, so we we missed uh, what you put in for the non-mayonnaise vinaigrette. 
Oh, I haven't done that part yet. I'll do that in a second, Kale. Thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right, so I have about three or four tablespoons of mayo in my bowl, my dressing bowl, and then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Just one tablespoon. And I try to use a clean spoon every time I'm spooning out of a new container so I don't contaminate other ingredients into my sauces. And I, that way it keeps longer in your fridge. So I'm putting in about one tablespoon of the, the um, mustard with my three or four tablespoons of mayo. I'm leaving my, my spoon in my mustard and I'm gonna leave, um, actually I should leave a spoon, I should leave my mayo, well, anyway. <laughs> Use a clean uh, spoon for mayo if you need more mayo. Lena? Question? Yes? Is this for the, is this for Nene, the, she's using mayo, so. This is for the mayo. So your next ingredient for your uh, dressing is this red wine vinegar, or sorry, apple cider vinegar, if you have it. If you have apple cider vinegar, go ahead and, and open it up and um, before you open it, just kind of shake it up and down a little bit. And then it'll incorporate some of the, the bottom part of the, um, the enzymes and the fermentation. So I'm gonna pour in about two tablespoons. You can measure if you want. I'm just gonna eyeball. If you don't have red wine vinegar, you can use, um, sorry, if you don't have apple cider vinegar, you can use red wine vinegar or lemon juice. Any acid would really be good. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. I'm just gonna squeeze. Um, I'm just gonna grind in like maybe a teaspoon of pepper, and then mix it all up. Mix in the vinegar into the mayonnaise and the mustard, and you'll get a dressing. Yeah. We're really behind on our dressing, and we'd miss uh, if you were not using the mayo. Oh, I haven't done that. I'll, I'll do, I'm doing a separate dressing for you guys. Oh, okay. yeah. So grab a clean, grab a clean bowl. For those, you, for those of you who are do, not doing a mayo-based dressing, go ahead and grab your clean bowl. We're about to make a vinaigrette. But if you have mayo, if you're making a mayo-based dressing, go ahead and add this into your coleslaw and mix. All right. Go ahead and add your, add your um. Add your slaw, add your, your mayo dressing into your slaw. How much apple cider do we use? What, Mimi? Two tablespoons. Thank you. Okay, so go ahead and add your, your mayo into your, um, into your, uh, your mayo dressing into your coleslaw. Two, um, one tablespoon of mustard, just one. And go ahead and mix it in. So, okay, those of you who are making a non-mayo-based coleslaw dressing, follow me. So if you have any extra garlic lying around like that you didn't use earlier, you can use a piece of garlic, but grab your bowl and put in about a, two tablespoons of an acid, either apple cider vinegar or red wine vinegar or lemon juice, two tablespoons of of an acid. Wait, Wait how many tablespoons? Tablespoons? Two. two tablespoons of an acid. This is only if you're doing a non mayo based coleslaw. We're doing our version two dressing if you don't want to use mayo in yours. Okay, so those of you who did use mayo, you're already mixing your mayo into your salad. And for those of you who are using a non-mayo base, go ahead and put two tablespoons of your acid, your vinegar, into a bowl, and then add in about um, a half a cup of olive oil. A half a cup of olive oil, whisk it in with a fork if you can. A half a cup of olive oil. a half a cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of the acid. And if you have Dijon, if you have Dijon mustard handy, go ahead and add a tablespoon of the Dijon mustard into your dressing as well. And those of you who are done mixing your coleslaw with your mayo, give it a taste. 
taste it. Taste it for salt. Taste it for tartness. Taste it for sweetness. Um, what do you think, Griffin? How does it? Uh, it's coda. Yeah. Um, what, What's should up, we, May? what should we? Uh, I mean, how much mustard should we put? One, one tablespoon. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Griffin, what did you think of your slaw? Um, okay, Lena, uh, can you repeat the ingredients for the what? mayo vinegar? Griffin, what did you, sorry, K.O., hold on a second. Griffin, what did you say? It's really salty. It's salty? Okay, go ahead and um, add a little bit more um, vinegar and a little bit more mustard to it. Um, Lena? Too much sugar. Yeah. Okay, K.O., sorry, K.O. has a question uh, and then Mayati. Can you repeat? K.O., what, what was your question? Uh, sorry. Um, can you repeat the ingredients for the non-mayo vinegar? Yes. It's two tablespoons of a vinegar. Okay. Two tablespoons of vinegar. And then like a quarter cup of olive oil. And then a tablespoon of mustard. Tablespoon of mustard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mayati, what was your question? Um, it tastes a little vinegary. Should we just add more mayo? Yeah, you can add more mayo. Balance out okay. the flavor by adding more mayo. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Lena, is it a quarter cup of olive oil or half? Okay. Uh, I would say, you could go ahead and use um, a half, sorry. I, 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 short, just do it, kind of eyeball it. It depends on how much, um, it depends on how much salad you have. Okay. You can use a half too, but just taste it along the way. Keep tasting and keep mixing. How is it now, everybody? Taste your slaw. Zoe, what do you think? Is it good? Okay, probably doesn't need any more salt or sugar. Um, Jamie, how's yours? Um, so I'm only tasting the dressing, but we haven't mixed it in, right? So I'm tasting oh, the okay, good. Or mix okay. It in. It's yummy. Yeah, mix it in, mix it in and taste it. Okay. Who said theirs was yummy? It was Aiden. Oh, cool. <laughs> Your dressing's yummy, great. Okay. So everyone done with their um, coleslaw. Um, the non-mayo based people are probably still mixing. That's fine. So um, you're, depending on how much slaw you have, you're gonna use about a half a cup of acid, uh, a quarter, uh, sorry, two tablespoons of an acid, two tablespoons of vinegar, about a quarter to a half a cup of olive oil and, um, and a tablespoon of mustard. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull out our ribs now. Okay, as you finish up your slaw, as you taste your slaw, how is it, Ellie? You don't add sesame seeds, okay. Natalie. I, you don't need to add sesame seeds. That's for a garnish for your ribs. Wait, how is it, Ellie? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what should we mix the salad with? Um, well, who's asking me that? Taryn. Oh, what do you mean? What do you mix it with? Oh, like what kind of utensil? Yeah. You can use like two, like two wooden spoons or two spatulas or a pair of tongs. I just used a spoon. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna go check on my ribs now. I'm gonna pull them out. And Corbin, I think you and I are ready to pull out our mushrooms too. All right, if anyone has any questions, you, you, you might need two hands to pull out your ribs. All right, I'm gonna pull out my mushrooms too. Ooh, nice. And then turn your oven up to broil. So if those of you who have a broiler, turn it up to broil. If you don't have a broiler, turn it up to the very, very highest temperature your oven will go to. Okay, any questions? Okay. Can I, should we keep, yeah. should we keep the foil over the ribs when we broil it? Nope, you're gonna take your, the foil off. Okay, thank, thank you for asking. Yep, 
So everybody go ahead and come come to the stove with me and check your ribs. And take your tongs, grab your pastry brush and grab your glaze. We're gonna glaze our ribs. And don't forget to turn your oven up to broil if you haven't already. Turn your oven up to broil after you take your ribs out. Wait, um, our, ours isn't ready yet, so. Okay, we... keep yours in there. Okay. You can keep yours in while it, while it still cooks. Hey, Lena? Okay. Yeah? Hey, John. Hey, John. Um, what do we do? Can we discard the, uh, the you know, the water oh, that was in the tray? Um, I'm just going to leave it in there. It's okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so I have a little bit of water left at the bottom. It's okay. But what I am going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to brush the glaze with my pastry brush. I'm going to brush the glaze all over the ribs. So I'm just going to put a layer of glaze all over it. And I'm going to use my tongs and turn it over and glaze the other side as well. So go ahead and brush your glaze. You have a question? See, I have one one layer of the glaze on one side. I'm going to take my tong. I'm going to flip to the other side and glaze the other side too. So this is kind of like the bone side. Okay, so glaze, you don't have to glaze the bone part, but just glaze all the meat. And then after you turn it over and you've glazed it, you can turn it back over so that it's right side up again. Okay, so maybe what actually what it makes more sense is everyone turn your meat over so that the bone side is up and glaze that side first. So turn your meat over so the, the kind of the back side is up, so kind of upside down and glaze that side first, and then turn it over and glaze the other side on top, because that's the side that's gonna broil. Brush your glaze all over your ribs. Oh, I see everyone doing that, it's awesome. Brush the side that has the bony side first, and then you can turn it over and brush the, top, the concave the top side. You should have plenty of glaze. You don't need to. Um, you don't need to put on too thick a layer. And if you have bits of garlic clinging to your glaze and your pork, it's totally fine. And don't forget to turn your oven on to broil. Okay, so now that both sides of my ribs are glazed, I'm gonna put it back into the oven onto the top rack. So I'm gonna move my oven rack to the top rack and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. You might, some of you who are smaller and younger might need, a, might need an adult to help you do that. But I'm gonna try to move my, my oven rack. Move to the oven. I'm gonna move my oven rack to the to one level up because my rack was in the middle at first but now i'm going to move it to the to the second level here so it's just a little closer to the top so it gets closer to the burner on top as i broil it okay go ahead and put your ribs back in you don't need to cover it with foil again leave the top foil off leave the top foil off Okay, once you're done glazing both sides, move your oven rack to the top rack and make sure your oven is on broil. And we're gonna broil it for about four minutes. Hey Google, set a timer for four minutes. Four minutes, and that's starting now. Okay, as you wait for your ribs to broil, if you have green onions, you can chop your green onions and use it as a garnish on top. 
And if you don't have green onions, it's fine. And if you want to serve your slaw in a different bowl, you can also move it into a serving bowl or you can just serve it as is out of the bowl that you had it in. All right. How's everyone doing? Any questions? Anyone to unmute everybody? I have a question. Ellie, Ellie, oh yeah, you have a question, John? Do you ever broil the, uh, the underside or just the top? I'm just gonna broil the top. Okay. But you can broil the underside too, you can. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh-huh. Ellie, what did you just taste? Did you just try your slaw? Are you trying your slaw? How is it? Okay. How's your slaw? Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Ella, how are you doing? Uh, what, what phase are you in? Are your oven, is your, are your ribs back in your, broiling in your oven? Yeah. Okay, cool. Happy Father's Day, Dave. Oh, thanks, Lena. Sure, hi. Hi. How you doing, Zach? Are your is your are your ribs in your oven? Cool. Hey, Lena. Yeah. So I put Karen. It's Chris. Oh, Chris. Chris. Hey, Chris. Put the ribs back in. Um, is, is it still three fifty? No, broil. Right. You want it on broil? For yeah. How long? For about four or five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're almost there, guys. We're like ninety eight percent ready for dinner. There's one last step we're gonna do. So as you wait for your ribs to broil, go ahead and start cleaning up your workspace. You can um, put away any ingredients you don't need anymore, like your, um, you know, any acid, any vinegar, um, your mayo if you used it, or your honey, your mustard can go back in the fridge. I always try to take advantage of this downtime to start kind of straightening up. And then the other thing you wanna do is you wanna get your, um, get a serving platter, a big serving platter ready for your ribs because we're gonna take the, the ribs out of the oven in a couple minutes and we're gonna cut up the ribs and I'll show you how to do that. So grab a big serving platter if you haven't already. and grab a carving knife. So like a utility knife that's like a long thin knife, like the one I used to cut the ribs earlier um, yesterday. All right. So I'm about 38 seconds away from my ribs being, from checking on my ribs. What I'm gonna be looking for is for my ribs to be kind of browned on top um and corbin you can also glaze their mushrooms too where's corbin 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 where'd you go did i lose corbin oh there he is corbin you can glaze the mushrooms too did you do that already okay good forgot to ask you to do that all right i'm gonna pull my i'm gonna go check on my oven now hey google stop Ooh, oh boy I see that some of my ribs in the back got a little charred, but that's okay. I pulled them out just in time. I may start. Okay, you see? The ribs are glistening. I think if you, I think this is, um, if you want to check the right amount of brownness. If you like your ribs kind of browner, you can go ahead and put them back in the oven. I'm gonna pull this piece off first because it looks pretty ready. It's been, the sugar is caramelized onto the ribs. So I'm gonna put this on my cutting board. I'm transferring this on my cutting board. And then these two pieces, I think could use a little bit more time under the broiler. So I think I'm gonna put it in for another minute or two. The back of my oven is a little bit hotter than the front of my oven. And these were kind of near the front. so. I'm going to put this back in the oven for another minute. 
or like maybe a minute and 30 seconds. Hey Google, set a timer for one minute and 30 seconds. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cut my ribs. So get your serving platter ready. That's okay. Okay, I see a lot of movement in the, in the kitchens, everyone's kitchens. And if you've taken all of your ribs out of your oven, do not forget to turn off your broiler. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cut my ribs. I'm taking my tongs. I'm gonna take my tongs in one hand, my left hand, and I'm gonna use my, I'm right-handed, so I use my right hand to cut. So I'm taking my tongs in my left hand and my knife in my right hand that I cut with. I'm just gonna lift it up. I'm just gonna cut in between the bones. You see here in these notches in between the bones, I'm gonna cut down along the sides of the bone and just cut off the meat, cut, cut the ribs into a strip. I have this big bone here that I don't need, so I'm just gonna tear it off or cut it off. Don't need that, okay? And then you're just gonna cut your, your ribs into strips, into ribs, and then pile them onto your serving platter. You see, how's everyone doing? I'm just gonna put it onto my serving platter. Let me find a spot where you can see it. You guys did great. Hey Google, stop. There goes my timer, so I'm gonna check my oven again. But if you're slicing meat, go ahead. Because everyone's meat is cooking at a different rate. Here's my, my ribs here. Perfect, I'm turning off my broiler. Don't forget to turn off your broiler. Do not forget to turn off your ovens after you're done using it. Okay, how's everyone doing? Mayati, where are you when you're cooking? You're done? Are you ready to slice yet? Um, I'm, I'm still broiling it. Okay, okay, make sure you keep an eye on it, okay? It can very quickly burn. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. How are you, Monique and Karen? Where are the kids? <laughs> they, they're now on the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Great. They, 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 we lost them. Yeah, yeah. They did good, and then they just failed. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. They stuck with it as long as they could. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to plate my ribs. Let's see. So keep slicing your ribs if you need. If you need um. If you need a hand. Let us know. There's one. There's the other. How is it, Zoe and Rich? Happy Father's Day, Rich. How's it going? How's it look, Zoe? Hi. How's it looking? It looks good. Good? Yeah? Yep. Okay, I'm just piling my ribs onto my plate. I'm kind of oh, stacking them. Oh, How are you doing, Ella? Are you, are you cutting? Okay, cool. How are you doing, Shmoo? Is it? Ooh, nice. We have extra sauce. What should we do? Okay, great question, Taryn. For your extra sauce, you can pour it into a small bowl and serve it on the side at the dinner table in case you want to dip. Some people like their ribs super saucy and sticky. Some people just like a finer layer. Um, so the recipe calls for these ribs to be pretty sweet and sticky. So if you like that, you can put that extra sauce on the side. So I'm gonna cut up my, my second rack of ribs. And again, I'm taking my tongs in my left hand because I'm right-handed. I'm gonna use my knife. I'm just gonna cut in between the bones. Cut the ribs into pieces. Should be pretty tender. Oh, 
the slow roasting and in the in the using the water, the water kind of helps steam the the bones, uh, steam the meat, and made it kind of uh, the slow roasting. It slows slowly makes the meat really tender without overcooking it. Okay, and I'm gonna put my add my third rack. And then be careful when you clean up, um, be careful with the water that's still left on your, on, your, um, on your sheet pan. Be careful it doesn't spill. It's a mixture of oil and water, probably mostly, mostly oil actually. If you have baby back ribs, it's the same procedure. You'll just be cutting it the same way. The difference between baby back ribs and these other spare ribs is that baby back ribs tend to be a little bit more leaner and meatier. The short, the spare rib is a little fattier, but both equally tasty. I turn on a light here. I kept you guys a little longer than I normally do. Um, but that's okay, I hope. Anyone have any questions? Sonia and Rosa, you've disappeared. I hope you're nearby. <laughs> oh yeah, we're over there. We're just cutting it. Okay, good. It's done? Yeah. It's so done? Yeah. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah, stack it onto a serving platter and then sprinkle it with green onion if you decided to use a green onion garnish and sesame seeds. You can also take the glaze and kind of do one last drizzle over the top to make it look shiny. And I think we're all there. It's a lot of ribs. Yeah, I'm gonna give some to Uncle Tony. Any questions? And again, like what, what I mentioned to Taryn is Pour your leftover glaze into a small bowl and you can serve it on the side of the table for dipping. Corbin, how are you? Um, go ahead. Oh, okay. uh, where do we put the green onions? Do we just put it on top? Yep, sprinkle it on top. Oh, thank you. Sprinkle it on top. I'm gonna garnish it here. I'm gonna put on my, my sesame seeds. I ran out of green onions because I made, I made a big dish with it yesterday. So I'm just gonna put on sesame seeds, but you can also use green onions. And cilantro, cilantro, anything green would taste really, look really pretty on these ribs. Any other questions? Don't forget to serve a pair of tongs with your slaw. It tastes uh, really good, Lena. <laughs> I already oh, have hi. My, oh, good. <laughs> the ultimate test will be if Al likes it. Hey, Al, happy, happy uh, Father's Day. Thank you. <laughs> You already snuck in a taste also. <laughs> good, good. Delicious. I'll I'll post the recipe on our Google Doc. Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Tegan, how are you? You said it tastes good. Did you taste Thank it you yet, Tegan? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi Reina. Glad you joined us. Thank you. Happy Thank Father's Day to Leif. Thank you. Bye, Chris. Bye, Piper. Bye. Bye. Lisa. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you next Thank week. You.